innovation index has been lower in those countries for last 50 years does not mean it will remain lower for next 20 years. It is bound to grow. And you will see suddenly a lot of changes happening. And I want to give you an example that uh, in India, which is considered a substantially large country, uh, but a much smaller banking uh, uh, ecosystem, we had less than, let's say, I'm just, I'm just giving you a shocking figure, although this is not a correct figure. About 100 crores spent on IT and IT or, or innovation in banking technology, let's say before 95. So between 91 and 95, and before, before 91, there was no automation in the banks. So between 91 and 95, only 100 crores was spent in India. So companies such as mine, old, larger, uh, older company, it came in being in 1995 and we were seeing how the evolution is happening. You will not believe in front of our eyes, in just about next decade, the country spent more than a billion dollars and at that time, uh, dollar was about 40 rupees. So 4,000 crores got spent in banking automation. And now if you see with payments, compliance, KYC, EKYC, and all, all kind of risk management and networking solutions applying there, uh, being applicable in financial markets, this must be running into multiples of billions. So how does innovation index changes in front of you? You don't come to understand very, uh, unless you are on the, on the field. So we missed out a lot of such opportunities. I am trying to say these countries will undergo a massive innovation index change. So it's an opportunity for you to probably sell in those markets. So my case rests here. I am not trying to sell for them. I am trying to sell for you. Okay. Next is what to look for. So one is uniqueness in business culture. Most markets will need highly intuitive UI and UX and simplified and relevant reports. You know why am I saying this? Have you heard this before? I am not sure you have heard this many times. But the fact is that all of us know that until mobility came in India, our software engineers used to only build transaction engines. They never built front ends, they never built reports. They used to think software code chal right. everything is fine, done. But please appreciate that the, we as a country have more literate manpower who goes to work on technology vis-a-vis -vis any other country on this earth. I don't know about Israel and Russia and all that, but all other countries, when people come to work in banks or financial institutions or grocery stores or any such stores, they are far less literate than Indians are. Because in India, in earlier times, if you remember old movies, my B.A. Pasu, everybody was a degree holder. We, we came from a mid-north, Madhya Pradesh, every panwala was an LLB. Generally, every cigarette vendor was an LLB lawyer. So, India is far more literate. And these are the literate people who go in corporate jobs, people who go in banks, financial services, or even on grocery stores. They, the girls who are operating machines today in, uh, in uh, malls and giving you a coins exchange and all that so swiftly, try and do that in a queue in America and see what happens. The person there gets utterly confused if you say, uh, okay, the, uh, if, if your uh, bill is say uh, $48 and now you don't want that $2 back. So uh, uh, you give them some some other combination and they get utterly confused. They say, no, give us only $50 and we we'll give you $2 back. <laughs> That's how it happens. So I am trying to tell you the value of UI and UX, user experience, Simplicity of UI is far more valuable outside because of this issue that the people who are utilizing your systems outside, they are not literate people. They are not trained uh, to the handle banking systems the way our people are complicated screen uh, is, uh, and nothing is user definable and if you navigate, you can't figure out where is customer name, where is account number, where uh, instead of getting into criticism, I will just simply end here saying that UI UX is a very important, uh, very important attribute for uh, these markets. Incidentally, just as an extension to our conversation, in America, people come in shifts to work on same terminal. You know that? In a, there, there are branches 
and there are millions of branches in US. But those branches are not manned by same people every day. So people who are doing multiple jobs, they come to the banks as contract labor and they are operating the terminals. Here we write OM and Swastik and put our name because we believe we are going to be in this branch forever. Okay, put our child's photo on the desktop. Right? But then the desktop is not yours, the seat is not yours. The person who comes there next day to work may not be the same person who was working yesterday. So therefore UI UX has to be so simplified that somebody, somebody can intuitively run the banking process without breaching anything. Number one. Number two, the MIS part has to be even more tighter. And there is no concept of MIS in banking systems and financial services technology for the last so many years. If, if it shocks you, better be. But the truth is, our people have not built, either we create repository of very dirty reports, which are not useful, or we are struggling to create a report. Okay? There is a, uh, okay, I'm not getting to that. I'm just trying to say that there is an absolute requirement of having to understand what is compliance and governance need on one side and top management MIS need on the other side and just focus on that area and make your data being available and as much as possible make it so much automated that there is no personal inter intervention required. Today that technology is available, <coughs> incidentally five years back it was not possible to do. Even two, three years back it was not possible. And if I give you gory stories as to how banks run their uh, day end operations or MIS and all that, you'll be shocked. It's nothing is online that you think that in the end I will just get a PNL in, in night just because I'm running integrated banking systems. It does not happen that way. Okay, so therefore back offices are much, much bigger than the front offices in most of the financial institutions. So we have to work reverse. We have to go to a bank or a financial institution, a microfinance, a thrift, or savings, small savings bank in these countries and say, I will give you a system which is fully automated in terms of your reporting needs. I understand that your government requires following, your central bank requires following reports. In addition to that, Ideally, you should look for these 10 parameters and I will be able to give you a completely online report on this. And this is something which they will appreciate. Next, I will not take much longer for other things. Products that follow compliance dictum or a trend will succeed faster. Now, why am I saying this? Is In Malaysia, in 2006 or 7, they create what is called as Malaysian Internet Corridor. If you, if you want, you can go and still uh, search for it and you will get it on Google. And you will believe that uh, till about last year or two years back their uh, internet systems were not so great. So the fact is that there is a dictum which, uh, sorry, there is a direction and there is a difference between a direction and a dictum. Now how a direction builds, I will give you another example of Malaysia only where an anti-money laundering solution had to be uh, uh, anti money laundering solution was made uh, uh, mandatory uh, for all financial institutions. So, before it was made mandatory, there was a guideline. When there was a guideline, we were spending millions and millions of rupees, but nobody was buying for various reasons. The moment it became a dictum, it started selling like hot tea. And it happened in Indonesia, it happened in Philippines, it happened it's happening in Myanmar, Philippines. Philip, in all these places. So what I want to tell you, if you have something, if you are reading today and you are figuring out that a country is undergoing changes, the best thing is to catch a consultant there or, to, or visit and may talk to somebody in central bank or a regulatory authority and figure out where the next or in the area where you have a product or services, is there a next dictum coming in or there is a regulatory change coming in. If it is happening, please spend all your money there. I can assure you, you will sell like hotcakes. You will be the first ones to sell and um, uh, you will really enjoy that. I want to give you another example where in a certain market, you know what certain market? I'm talking about Nigeria. In Nigeria, uh, we found out that anti-money laundering solution changes, uh, uh, government changes are going to happen very fast. Otherwise, the country will get into FATF guidelines. And we understood that project managers define phase one, phase two in India. They define phase one, phase two as per how you have built the solution. If it is not ready, it becomes phase two. 
So you will light up in Singapore, uh, the, let's say at India time 4.35, which is like 6, 6.30, two and a half hours ahead there. So you will struggle, run here and there and catch a flight to go to Cambodia, Malaysia, or Indonesia, wherever you are taking a flight. There are a lot of direct flights available from here. I just want you to dramatize this to give you an example. And you would think that it is 6 o'clock or 8 o'clock there, so you will get a very nice breakfast in the, in the, in the aircraft and suddenly you will realize there is a lunch served to you at 8 o'clock in the morning. Because you must appreciate that they believe that by the time they land on the site, it will be lunch time, so they will serve you lunch. So they eat very early. So if we culturally are people who eat late, they are culturally the people who eat very, very early. So uh, if you, at Saturdays, you I, unless it's somebody who is very close to you, you cannot call it. Incidentally, even India is becoming late. Can't call most people on Saturdays. So, uh, uh, but the part that you should know they eat early is very, very important. And uh, next is that business discussions are possible over breakfast in most countries. But more specifically in Malaysia or Indonesia uh, and other places are opening up. In Malaysia or Indonesia, you can call a customer and say, can we have breakfast? How you can say to an, uh, to an English customer. Very easily you can tell an English customer, can we meet for a